What's up, guys? I'm Benji. And I'm Miles. And you're tuned in to The Proper Fit. All right, guys. So our topic for this episode is what to eat when. We're also going to be bringing you our tune of the time that we're enjoying right now. Instead of our normal Q&A section, also known as Fitness Whispers, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be um, slotting a little interview. Awesome. Looking forward to that. And we've also got our Uncle Ben section where you can ask me absolutely anything. doesn't have to be fitness related. And I'll do my best to answer that scenario for you. Oh, boy. And to finish off the show, our proper fit tip, our PFT for this episode. So let's get into it. You're tuned in to The Proper Fit. So, Miles, this episode is all about what to eat and when. Yes, sir. We've had uh, a number of emails, questions uh, via the MyZone app. Uh, around food, you know, and we've been trying our best over these episodes to cover some bits and pieces about diets, fad diets, the ones that are worth following, the ones that aren't. Yeah. And I guess over the next couple of episodes, we'll we'll dig deep into that. Yeah. But one of the really common themes and one of the really uh, key points that's coming out of some of the questions mm. is that people really want us to give them a little bit of an idea of what to eat and when. Sure. And whether that, whether it matters at all, sure. you know? Sure. Well, yeah, I think that lo- the last point of what you just said there, um, if it matters at all, when is the most efficient time or the best time to eat certain foods? So if we were to focus around post-workout nutrition, yeah, um, it's as soon as possible, you know? As soon as your body is calmed down, as soon as you, as you can actually bear digesting food, that's when you should start to eat your food you know your body's starved of energy so now we need to replenish the source and this is really key here because actually what to eat specifically when isn't as important as the sum of everything that you're eating right Um, and that's the really key point so if your diet is pants all of the time then when you eat isn't really relevant yeah if you consistently eat pretty well Mm -hmm. then again Specifically eating at specific times isn't that important. Mm -hmm. One of the key things to uh, consider is what your body is going to do with the fuel that you're placing in it at any given time. Mm -hmm. So if you think of the analogy of a car, for example, you tend to fill a car up before you go on a long journey. Mm -hmm. If you don't fill that car up before you go on a long journey, you know that your car probably isn't going to run very efficiently and may even break down. Sure. So in terms of when you know that you're doing like a high intensity workout, you're doing something like, you know, Benji strong, or you're doing um, a hit workout or something like attack, yeah. you know that at some point you're going to need that fuel within your body to be able to push yourself to the absolute maximum whilst you do your workout. Right. And you realize that if you don't fuel your body correctly, your results are going to show. So there's that to consider. Another thing to consider is going to bed, for example. Mm. You don't need energy to go to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we need to avoid is eating within sort of an hour of going to bed Mm. because your body won't be moving and working as efficiently as it will at other times throughout the day. So that's a key time to avoid. So in terms of those two circumstances, 100%, you need to be focused on what you're eating or in the latter, what you're not eating, you know, at those times. In terms of consuming protein within that 20 minute window, great if you can. Of course, there are a number of effects on the body overall during exercise and post exercise, a number of them. Endorphins being one of them, one of the ones that probably are most commonly known, but also then the effect on the central nervous system and the way the body responds. And a lot of people feed back to me, you know, the way they feel when they finished exercise. Mm. Now, in terms of what your body does with regards to digestion, your body just works more efficiently. Mm. You know, if you think of a diesel engine, for example, in a car, sorry to use the analogy of a car for anybody that doesn't have one, <laughs> but he can get this, he can stick with me. Uh, a, a diesel car, they always say that it takes a while to get going but it runs at its most efficient point almost in the middle so when you've 
start the turn the engine over you start the car running uh normally it's a little bit loud it's a little bit groggy it struggles to get going but once that car starts to fly actually everything starts to come into play and everything just starts to work better and if we translate that into the body you start to feel better and so consuming your protein if that is what you're looking for in terms of that trade-off of trying to trade fat for muscle or even gain muscle mass then protein is significant and during that 20 minute window if you can great get it in but if you can't don't beat yourself up about it not the end of the world you know yeah not at all not at all i think that leads us on to uh next section where we bring to you a tune of the time or a tune that we're enjoying right now not always a brand new one um but in this case it is it's from an artist called K Trinada, and it features a man called Iman Amari, who's an outstanding vocalist. I love him. Uh, but yeah, this tune is called To the Music. I love that tune. You must, must check it out. That's To The Music by K Trinada featuring Iman Omari. Awesome tune. You're a big fan of K Trinada too, right? No? Yeah, man, absolutely. No, I've, I mean, I've been listening to him for a good few years now. Okay, so we've got another fitness giveaway. Uh, and if you've tuned in to episode four, you'll know exactly what that's about. So this episode is all about what to eat when. And so uh, I've brought in a friend who's a professional footballer. Uh, He's played for the likes of Fleetwood Town and Blackpool, winning promotion with both of those, playing in League One. Uh, And he's currently now Newport's uh, top striker uh, with a ton of goals to his name. Uh, And he goes by the name of Jamil Matt. Hi, Jamil. Hi, man. How you doing, mate? Should be a bro, innit? We're, um, we've obviously... Obviously, quite close, aren't we? So, um, nice, yeah. nice, to, nice that you've invited me on, and nice to have a little chat with you on here. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know what? Like, it's relevant because um, a lot of people have been asking us um, what types of things they should eat and when they should. And um, I think what we're trying to really define for people is that a good diet overall is more important than that. But there is also an element of kind of eating specifically for performance. And there's yeah. sort of no one better uh, to speak about that than a professional athlete uh, on footballer specifically like yourself. So, I mean, I just a little bit, just to give a bit of context um, in terms of where you've sort of come from in your footballing journey um, and how you've got to the point where you're uh, probably playing some of your best football right now at Newport, right? Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. Um, but yeah, it started for me probably a little bit later than most people. Um, yeah. I went through the route of non-league um, yeah. up until the age of I think I think twenty-one. I was non, I was like non-league and same playing, same professionally. Um, and as well, I was in the last year at uni. I actually, got a chance to play for Kidderminster Harriers um, yeah. full time. So I went to professional game um, from there, from Sutton Caulfield Town, where I was semi-professional. Um, so I had yeah. areas um, a couple of years there and then ended up going into um, South for Fleetwood. Left there, South for Blackpool. Um, obviously, a chief promotion with Fleetwood to League One. Um, yeah. And then a couple of years later, left South for Blackpool. Um, similarly, a chief promotion with them. Um, and then from Grimsby, ended up signing to Newport, where I've currently been for the last two seasons. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and scoring and, and doing some big things with them. I guess what's important as well to contextualise is that, you know, coming into the professional game late uh, like that is is difficult almost, you know? Um, and I think it's it's a huge achievement, the fact that you've been able to make that transition somewhat later than most people uh, normally do in the professional game and then being able to achieve the levels that you have um, playing at that top level and uh, achieving promotion on, on more than one occasion, right? Yeah, I think um, kind of gives you that little bit of an extra edge, I think, coming through a non-league because you've been 
to that side where you've not been full time and you're probably looking looking up at the players who are full time and professional um, in the football league and you're a little bit envious. Um, so when you do yeah, get your yeah. chance at that level, you're um, more I don't want to say more determined to, to to grab it, but you're very aware of how hard you've worked to get there um, and yeah. how hard it is to get there. So so you're not going to give that up quite um, that easily. So um, so I'm proud to say I've it's nearly ten years I've been a professional now, and if you'd asked me um, ten years ago if I if I saw that happening, then I probably would have been quite pessimistic about that. So it's something I am yeah. quite proud of um, coming through that long league background, but something I'm I'm definitely not willing to let stop yet. And I guess I mean I've seen you off the pitch, the way you take care of yourself pre-season, um, out of season, of course as well, but also in terms of food. And I guess one thing uh, specifically would be really interesting for our listeners to get a grasp on how a professional footballer might eat in general. Um, and then potentially how you might eat, let's say, in the build-up to a game. So um, what would be your kind of typical preparation or, you know, a kind of overview of the way in which you would eat uh, pre-game and post-game as well? Yeah, so um, I think pre-game, you'd probably talk in 48 hours um, before a game, especially you, you'll see hydration during the week. So obviously quite important. Um, if, you, if you're not hydrated, then you know, so quite a lot of water. If you're not hydrated, then you you straight away put yourself at risk of more injury um there's a lot of things that that just drinking water that some people don't realize it it can affect um, performance and 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 court like I said helps to cause injury so and um, that's obviously quite key um and just just concentration in terms of hydration so that's quite a big thing um and like up to four hours before a game i'll always be having stuff like um like your carbs so pasta um it's quite a big one um and your rice sauce, I, I tend to have before a game normally like a spaghetti. Um, okay. So, so, yeah, something as simple as that spaghetti or like a lasagna or something like that, you know, just something to mm-hmm. um, see something with quite lean meat in it, but um, something that's going to give me a release of energy um, yes. come three o'clock on a Saturday. Um, so that tends to be um, the things that I'll eat in terms of the night before a game um, mm-hmm. and on, a, on a morning. Um, some people have tend to have a big breakfast and then they'll have a smaller um, lunch or pre-match meal as it might be before the before the game or some people have it the other way around they'll have a very small breakfast and they'll load up just before the game um, okay. I'm probably the previous one where I, I quite like having maybe a bit of a bigger breakfast um, and then when it comes towards the game try to have a little bit less um, so kind of like your cereal but in the morning I'll have I might get up and I might have a, um, some eggs for toast scramble eggs um, toast beans and um, then coming up to the game I'll just have like your porridges cereals um, yeah. a bit of fruit maybe banana something like that nothing that's going to leave me feeling too heavy fry up <laughs> for example um, <laughs> yeah. you know when I was younger I didn't I didn't think about the nutrition side of it and you know just, just those little bits of information and, and nutrition that's why a lot of some athletes get get to the level they get to because th- their attention to detail is that that good. Where yeah. these little details in terms of food and, and stuff like that can can uh, make a difference in performance. So the older I've got, especially, I've definitely watched more what I eat, um, and I think it does does affect performance. The so days where I I don't eat as well, or I'm not as strict, I can definitely mm-hmm. feel the detrimental effects on performance. So. Uh, yeah. And then what about post-match, like post-game? So you've you've run around for, you know, 60, 70, 90 minutes in most cases. Um, what sort of things are you doing in terms of nutrition post-game? Uh, um, immediately after a game, like I said, hydration again is quite massive. So lots of drink, lots of water, um, especially after a game. But I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not one of those that's massively strict to what I eat after a game. Um, yeah. it's the one especially especially immediately after a game I'll have during the week I won't eat anything that's that bad for me so when it comes to after a game it's kind of you've burnt all these calories off in a game you've worked your socks off during that week so it's the one mm-hmm. one day one day I might let myself have something like a like a pizza maybe or something after a game it's the, yeah. it's the um, yeah. cliche thing that a footballer might have after a game um yeah, pizza. Where I might have, you know, I might have a takeaway something after a game. Um, yeah, but still, if I can, if I can avoid it, I'll, I'll still be having like a, a rice-based meal or something like that. Just 
with, okay. with maybe some maybe a bit of chicken, um, something lean. Um, again, if I can, because that obviously, especially if you've got a, a Tuesday game, for example, if you've got a Saturday game, you know, you've got a game on the Tuesday, then um, still you've got to watch what you eat um, to to give yourself the best possible chances of recovery to, to go into the next game. A lot of fruit, a lot of veg um, to try and aid recovery. It's good to contextualise. Like, this is a very big guy, ladies and gentlemen. Not big as in fat. This is a guy that's like, you, how tall are you? 6'2", six, 6'3"? Six, Six six four, I think. I <laughs> check just under six, six four. four. Um, <laughs> I'm going to round it up. I'm going to say six four. <laughs> um, so this is this well, is an engine that needs a lot of fuel. But I guess what's really cool and what's really good um, and helpful for my uh, listeners to hear is that you know even at an elite level that you're at uh, in terms of performance, there is balance there. You know, um, yeah. and and ensuring that overall your diet is is good. And then also knowing that you can reward yourself and choosing those moments to reward yourself so that it's not to the detriment of your actual performance and overall physique. So, you know, having that pizza, having that takeaway um, as close to your maximum and optimum performance time as possible is less detrimental than it would be if you had that pregame. And I think for the most basic person coming into fitness, there, there is, a, you know, a, a lot of information on the internet um, that is not factual uh, and can sometimes lead you down the wrong path. So it's really important to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and people that are at that elite level of performance um, as to how they actually eat and whether it's all all science or whether some of it is about making sensible choices and being consistent. So, you know, thank you for really sharing that, that message with us in uh, this episode. Uh, when do you get started again? And it's been difficult. You've been, you know, home sort of uh, taking care of your son, which I know uh, has, has been great for you in terms of having that time, but you've been, yeah, not, not training, not being able to go in. When are you back training and up and running in terms of playing football again? Listen, your guess is as good as mine at the minute. Um, <laughs> it, it's um, oh, I wish I could give you an exclusive on here and tell you, but now nah, we, uh, we we actually don't know at the minute um, what's happening in terms of for next season. I think um, it's been widely um, put out there that League Two's cancelled in terms of the actual or or been fin- the season's finished. And some health health is the most important thing in all this. So. Um, definitely it's sensible to see what happens with that first before before we resume well thank you very much uh, for coming on this episode and uh, giving us some some real insight into how uh, a professional footballer looks at, at, at their diet so thank you for that Jam cheers no problem man Nothing, anything for you bro so that leads us into our Uncle Benj section Miles, <laughs> yes, people. We should change. I think we should change this to the troublemaking section. Rather than the section. It's one and the same. It works the same way. <laughs> um, yes, guys. So, same as always, this is an anonymous section. You are more than welcome to send in your dilemmas. So, this is a dilemma that we got sent this week. Uncle Bench, here it is. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. A friend I've not seen in a long time due to lockdown wanted to meet up for a picnic. We both bought things, but after the picnic, I remembered why I haven't seen her in so long. She's really tight. She wanted to to split the cost of a jar of jam she bought and sent me her bank account details along with her other things. I feel really awkward. How do you deal with that? Oh, man. Uh... You know what? This is a this is a real interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to get myself in trouble here, as I do every episode, generally. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not. <laughs> See, I'm quiet. I'm, I'm just letting you crack on. I'm quiet at this time. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Um, me, personally, I'm not that tight. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. I mean, okay, look, we're all... Nah, I can't even find excuses for it. I'm really trying. I'm trying to be balanced and like I just can't. How do you deal with it? Um, I think if your friendship is going to be affected by you not giving her the 
75 pence mm. or whatever it might be to contribute to the jar of jam, mm. then I would just do it. Um, and I think maybe going forward, you want to clearly map out like, you know, what, what the expectations are. But the, no, f- that. that's shit. That's really <laughs> shit. Like, I'm not even like, I'm, gi- I'm giving this advice and I'm thinking, what? Like, if that is your friend, if that is your friend, right? Then like, she invited you for a picnic. <laughs> like, just decide between you, like, you're bringing this, you're bringing that and just fucking buy it. Like, <laughs> La- what is that about? And, ladies and gentlemen, we just experienced a Benji switch. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is this is Uncle Benji's alter ego. This is when Uncle Benj goes from having a flat cap to turning the cap backwards. <laughs> and you know those you know those glasses that you can like flip the 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 shade off. Oh, yeah, it goes so back you can down. use them like to read and then you just flip them down to sunglasses. <laughs> That's like flip the sunglasses down. Turn the flat cap backwards. Oh, yeah. This is like you got a little um, ratchet, ratchet bench. You got a little limp in the step now as well. You know, yeah, you, nah. There's some situations just bring out a lot less diplomatic <laughs> Uncle Bench. <laughs> and like, if she's well, this is- sending you mm. details of her account for you to contribute to like a jar of jam. Oh man. Well, I mean, that's the like, thing though. You, you say you say there's a dip- the diplomatic side of you is is gone, but this is, if you think about it, a very diplomatic way of living. Granted, it's cheap as hell, but it's, <laughs> you, you take, I want back, or I take, you can have back. So, But the key thing here is she invited her for the picnic. Ooh, big you know, like, that, that's, that's different. Like, if I invite you to my home for dinner, and then afterwards I send you the bill... <laughs> That's ridiculous. Like it is. Like if you if you and I go out and we go to Nando's, there's an expectation. We keep bigging up Nando's, by the way. Like that's not the only restaurant that I've ever eaten. Yeah, but in fact, everyone I loves a cheeky Nando's, Nando's. A restaurant. <laughs> I wouldn't even call Nando's a restaurant. But, <laughs> everyone loves but cheeky like, Nando's, if, man. If, if if we go to Nando's, we go to McDonald's, which we never go to. No. But you know, we go out somewhere to eat. There's an expectation there that we're gonna need money, right? Mm. Like you're going to need money for your meal. I'm going to need money for my meal. Mm. And let's say, for example, we turned up once and I didn't have any money, but you did. You may have paid for my meal. Mm. Guess what's going to happen the next time we go? (laughs) I'm going to reciprocate that, right? So like, unless unless I'm this girl, I might turn up with no money again. Mm. But like, it's it's about reciprocation. It's about like, like give and take. Yeah, you know, it's a two way street. And so, what about this? I mean, go on, go on. What if? And we don't know her financial status, but what if what if the girl needed the money? You know, then don't invite your friend to the picnic. But she was had a good. She like, was just nah, have a nice life. I'm not, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. <laughs> you just want don't nice invite your friend. <laughs> don't invite you if, if you can't afford the jam that you're going to put on the sandwiches yeah. for the picnic. Don't <laughs> invite your friend or at least be really clear with your friend what the expectations are. You know I'm what? inviting you yeah. to a picnic, but I want you to pay. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Like, Do you know come what? on. I that's what like you're saying. When I was, when I was at uni, definitely my yeah. first year at uni, that kind of situation came up quite a bit. You know, I, in fact, let me not get too, specific because then they'll know okay so listen (laughs) but like there was pete there was someone i knew who um i'd see definitely listening yeah you see how how i'm like just trying to bypass certain (laughs) i don't care (laughs) see it man tell them (laughs) one of the big things that i uh get a lot of messages actually about from other personal trainers is that this whole notion of uh free Mm. and expensive Mm. and that the, the, there's two kind of things at play here. So what people perceive to be expensive is relative to the individual. Mm-hmm. So for example, our, our online classes, 199, 299, uh, would you say that's expensive? No, I say it's a good deal. I wouldn't say that's expensive, yeah. but some people might consider it yeah. expensive. Yeah. It, it's relative to the individual, right? Yes. So so that's with, with regards to expense. But with, with regards to what's free, mm-hmm. That uh, isn't relative, actually. There's some fact there. 
So for example, someone might say, uh, which I had this just last week, a personal trainer, she was saying to me, look, Benji, I'm really struggling. I'm not furloughed because I'm self-employed. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to avoid getting grants uh, off the government, mm. which is something that I, she knew she could speak to me about because I've been in exactly that predicament. Right. And um, she said, but I want to work. I can see you're working. I know you work incredibly hard. Mm. And if I'm honest, I don't want to work as hard as you. Yeah. <laughs> but I do want to try and, and, and get by. I want to try and put these sessions on. And I'm really struggling with people not wanting to part with 299, 199 for a class. Mm. What do I do? Mm. And it was re- it's really hard because it, it's, it's heart wrenching because I, I, I could say, okay, but what feedback are you getting? You know, when you tell people the price, she said, one girl said, well, I can just do exercise for free. Right. And I sort of said to her, well, actually, what you want to be responding to that person is that nothing is really for free. Okay. Like nothing, nothing is actually for free. So if you go to YouTube to do a, what you perceive as free workout online okay Mm -hmm. that cost the person that recorded that video for youtube their time Mm -hmm. there was a camera involved if there's music there would have been a license involved if there was planning there would have been maybe paper or a laptop involved for that person Mm. so it wasn't free for them to produce that firstly secondly when you view that on youtube you view it from a device which you paid for, mm-hmm. unless you stole it. <laughs> you access that from the internet, which you connect to, which you pay for, sure, sure. unless you're stealing it. Sure. So that's one situation. If you go for a run for free, let's rewind. If you go for a run outside naked then potentially it's free <laughs> I wonder if, if, gonna... <laughs> if yeah yeah exactly so but if you step outside of your house mm-hmm. into the park for example you pay tax your taxes are the reason that that park is available to you for you to run in mm. so it's not free mm. secondly unless you went naked which I'm not advising you do, you're wearing trainers and you paid Nike or Asics or Reebok for those trainers. I'm, I'm trying to Unless you went out naked, you're wearing a t-shirt or a vest or leggings, hopefully all of them, <laughs> but you're wearing those things which you paid for. So actually nothing is free, but to perceive that paying one ninety nine or two ninety nine to a trainer for a workout as expensive mm-hmm. is a mindset, is a thought process that doesn't consider the bigger picture. So this is what I had to explain to this trainer. And it comes back into this scenario a little bit about your perception about what's expensive and what's free and what's not. Sure. And I guess maybe that the key thing here is that there's either uh, a separation because for that particular girl relating it to that scenario, she probably won't be able to engage someone who thinks that exercise is free. What would you say that she would have to do from this or this man or woman? She's going to find people that ain't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so that That's what she's do. got to do. No, I, I read a... Uh, uh, I'm not, if I'm honest, I'm not certain you can change someone's mind. Fair. Because if someone if someone has a conversation with you and tells you about all the new gym gear that they've purchased, yeah. but then tells you that they don't <laughs> want to pay for a workout because they can do it for free, yes. you're probably talking to the wrong person. I hear that. Okay. You know? Right. So you may have to just separate and appreciate that that's, that's her perspective. Yeah. That's what she thinks and move away from it. You I, wake up with a friend or just be quiet about it and keep going. Yeah. You've got to, you either keep the peace or... I mean, me personally, I'd tell her. Make like, I'd, <laughs> hey, 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 let's fight. I'm, I'm hey, hey. no jam, and you invite hey. me here. You mad? 
you know, or she, you know, reciprocation, maybe don't pay for the jam and then invite her to another picnic yeah, yeah, where yeah. you pay for the jam, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, th- there are, there are mindsets and um, it's important that we try and find people who share similar mindsets yeah. in terms of the things that we can enjoy uh, as a community. Cause that's what community is, right? Yeah. Like-minded people coming together. And that's quite important. Um, so, so unless what? it's racism, then that's not a good, <laughs> that's slightly different. <laughs> but jam, you want to find people who share your sentiment <laughs> on whether or not sharing jam is a good thing. <laughs> All right. right? So, so find, just to be really clear. So, so find like-minded people <laughs> and to top it off, you know, try and find a naked running buddy because they're always going to be fun. So yeah. And that's <laughs> the way you'll get your free work. <laughs> I'm trying to find think, them. That, think... that could be a lot of fun. You know, I'm just <laughs> so i think uh true to form we've got in a lot of trouble with the uncle ben section uh it's probably about time we moved on to our proper fit tip so what is our proper fit tip for this episode miles drum roll please the proper fit tip is prep is power Woo! Jeez, talk to me. Let's go. Right, right, right. So we can relate this one to the topic, you know, where we're talking about um, food timings and what to eat. You know, we're going to focus on the what to eat and when to eat. So most of the time we all live busy lives. We have hectic schedules. And the one thing that goes out the window is cooking. Um, Yeah. Cooking during the week just becomes, well, for me personally, can become quite long. Um, So when I'm, you know, out, outside of lockdown, I rely on meal prepping because I can section off a time of the week for me to just cook all my food. And once that's done, I'm good for the whole week. So then fantastic, I know exactly what I'm eating. So we go back to the, the topic, what to eat. You already have it set. When to Perfect. eat, you don't have to worry about it as much because you've got the food there already. So you just yeah. have to put it in the microwave bang, you're done. Just make sure you've got... And I guess you've got set meals as well. So exactly. you may have a breakfast meal, a lunch meal and a dinner meal. So exactly. that actually does shape some of the loose timings that you may eat around. Yeah, so you just want to focus on, you know, make sure you've got about 10, 15 minutes a few times a day to actually eat the food yeah. that you've cooked yeah. and you're set. Yeah. So, and the bit, I think the, the biggest benefits of meal prepping is, you know, you save so much money. You save a lot more money that way because you're not having so to... So you can buy more jam. <laughs> Sorry. Or, or a fitness class just putting out there there you go <laughs> um, but yeah i mean you know you can save so much more money because you're not eating out all the time um yeah. you're actually going to be eating healthier because you're more goal oriented and whatever you're trying to achieve you know that you're eating exactly what you're supposed to be eating and because of that fact you're actually going to get more motivated because there's almost this like sense of um accomplishment by yeah. eating exactly what you know you eat, but what you're supposed to be eating. Once you've done that, it's just like you feel happy, you feel content because you know it's, it's it's exactly what you should be eating, and you feel good about it. Good prep, prep is, power. is power. Awesome. So, I guess that concludes everything for this rather controversial episode. True <laughs> to form. So, if you've enjoyed it, if you haven't. Let me know your thoughts on the whole jam sharing thing. I'd be interested. We'll put a poll out and see what people think. But yeah, anyhow, you want to get in touch with us um, about any of the things that you've heard or if you're traumatized by any of my explanation as to why in which you should leave your friend that's charging you for jam, you can get at us via the email, which is the proper fit podcast at gmail.com or our Instagram handle, which is core attack, spelled C-O-R-E-A-T-T-A-C-K. Fantastic. So all that remains to say is I'm Benji. And I'm Miles. And you've been tuned in to The Proper Fit. <laughs> <laughs>